Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to take a look at DDWRT, and I've used this quite a bit in my lab. So I find uh, it's a really helpful little piece of software to put on a basic cheap router for troubleshooting, baselining, site surveys, and all sorts of good things. So let's take a look at it. So why bother with DDWRT? Well, from the website, if you take a look, it'll say that DDWRT is a Linux-based alternative uh, open source firmware which is suitable for a great variety of WLAN routers and embedded systems. In other words, when you get your router from D-Link or Linksys, there's uh, many things you could do with it that really doesn't come with it out of the box. I like to look at some of the additional features that are provided, and I will later on in this presentation, but some of the things I use is measuring user radio statistics. So right from the access point, I can see the signal strength and noise levels of the stations connected to the access point which is very important with site surveys and troubleshooting. I can create multiple SSIDs so I can have a guest one with no authentication and I can have an office one with authentication and different types of authentication. Lastly I can monitor network usage so again I'll take a look at some other features but those three kinda of pop to mind. So the first thing we have to do when we install DDWRT is figure out the version and um, model number of the router. So in this case it's a WRT54G version 6. From there we go to the DDWRT website, we check the database and sure enough this is supported. So when you click on this link you are brought to this download page and if you're not sure what you're doing the first time around just, just download everything. You, you're probably not going to need it all but why not? I find the easiest way to uh, reset these routers are to use power bars and the power bar right now is off so what we do is with the, we're going to hold this reset button down using our fancy reset tool yes it's a paper clip so I'm just going to press that down and I'm going to hit the power button and basically you wait people say anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute if I could see the front I would typically use the uh, status of the LEDs to determine when to let go right now again I you know you just wait even 10 seconds is typically more than enough time to have it in maintenance mode okay so now we've rebooted the Linksys router we've waited the specified amount of time and if I was to refresh this I should see the maintenance page and there it is so we got management mode firmware upgrade page every single router is going to be different so it's imperative you read the DDWRT instructions specific to your router. In my case I've got to load the VxWorks killer file to take the stock firmware off of my router. So I'm going to browse, just click on that, and there we go, VxWorks killer, and apply. Now you, obviously you've got to wait for this to finish. So we'll wait. Alright, so I've uh, paused it and obviously I've resumed my recording and it says upgrade success so at this point we are going to reboot the router and wait they say anywhere from three to five minutes so I don't know maybe get yourself a coffee or or whatever but we're gonna reboot the router again so now we're gonna replace the firmware with the DDWRT software so TFTP utility, I've uh, gone to the DDWRT website and downloaded it, so click click. There's our default IP for the server, 192.168.1.1. The default password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. The file we are going to use is going to be the DDWRT firmware. We can hit the upgrade button. Off I go. And, and we'll just wait for this to finish and then there's a reboot process after this. So um, I'll get another coffee and we'll resume in just a minute. So one of the first things we do now, we go to the DDWRT router, is obviously we use the same IP address to get to it. And the first thing it does is actually tells us the router is not protected. Obviously it's got the default user ID and password, that's what it's basically telling us so it's asking us to change stuff. Now it's important to note that the default username is going to be root, R-O-O-T, and the default password is going to be admin. So you can change it to whatever you like um, just for the sake of doing something. I'm going to type the same old thing, root, and I'm going to type admin, A-D-M-I-N, and I'm also going to type that in to confirm that and change password. Let's see what happens. 
So I hit the change password button, off it goes, and we're in. So it's important to note that this is a, um, a summary page, and if uh, you try to make any changes, it will prompt you for the username and password once, obviously, per session. And we, we will review some of the features in just another moment. But right off the bat, we've got some pretty interesting information that we don't normally get. So for example, my WAN IP is all zeros, which means that the internet port or the WAN port is not connected on the device. Obviously, my LAN IP of the router is 1.1, which you can obviously change. And it shows me all these interesting little statuses on services, memory, if I scroll down. You'll see wireless, it's an AP mode. We can change that to some pretty interesting things in a minute. The channel, the transmit output, the rate, all this good stuff. So in another uh, moment or two, I'm going to set this thing up and we'll show you some of the advanced features. Here's an example of uh, one of the things I use the DDWRT firmware on a router to do. As you can see, it's, the screen's changed just a little bit since the last time we saw it. We've actually got a WAN IP now, and we've got our obviously our LAN IP. So if we uh, scroll down again and just go to the bottom here, you'll see a wireless section, and we can see the MAC address of a client on the Ethernet side. And it's funny, it just says Ethernet 1, but this is actually our wireless statistics. So we can see the signal strength, the noise level, and the signal to noise ratio, which is uh, good to know. We also get a signal quality. So now we've actually got a tool and some visibility for site surveys. So if this access point was in a office somewhere and we wanted to see all the various clients connected to it, well, most people can tell us the client signal strength, noise, signal to noise ratio using various utilities, but very few uh, residential or, or quote unquote cheap routers will provide the opposite stats from the AP's perspective. So in this case, I can actually see that there's a very strong signal and the noise is fairly low, which in this case would be a, a pretty good connection. So this is one of the examples we use the tool, I use the tool for even in the lab. If I was to go to wireless tab just for one second, click that, we're prompted for that new ID and password, root and admin. And I'm going to just say OK. Click, click. Off we go. And we've got various options in wireless mode that we aren't usually um, given with the default software. Obviously, an AP is what everybody's familiar with. We can actually have this as a client. So if you have an Ethernet based device without wireless, or you have wireless and the antenna or radio isn't strong enough, you can always use your router as a cheap and cheerful wireless extender. We've got bridge, we've got ad hoc, repeater, you like to repeat a signal, so on and so on and so on. Now if I just move down just a little bit, I can add virtual interfaces and what this will do for us is add various SSIDs. So I can call this for example DDWRT uh, for example test and I can create an SSID, uh, multiple SSIDs within this one access point. So that's again another example of what I use it for. So later on if there's any interest in this I'll, I'll deepen, uh, dig in a little deeper and I'll show you some other things I use it for. Well I guess that's it. We've taken a stock router, we've installed DDWRT, I've shown you just some just some of the really generic highlights of the software and I showed you an example of using it for a wireless site survey. So again if there's any interest just leave some comments on the board and I'll um, gladly do some more um, presentations on some other features that I like to use this for and hope you had a good day. Bye for now.